at theraces.com. Cheltenham Preview, sponsored by labrooks.com. Thanks for logging on. Yeah, Cheltenham just days away now. Feature on day one is, of course, the champion hurdle. Discussing that with me is jockey Andrew Thornton. More for Mandy in a few moments' time. But let's get all the facts and stats with Matt Chapman. Thanks very much, uh, Luke. Great to have you and Andy on the show for the website. I tell you what, this champion is going to be a real crackerjack, isn't it? It's a lot of the old guard have gone. Let's have a look at the stats for the race. And as you can see on screen right now, no five-year-old has won. That's from 73 runners since See You Then in 1985. So basically on the stats, you can get rid of your five-year-olds. Just three horses older than eight have won since 51. So just three horses older than eight. 15 of the last 19 winners have won at Cheltenham before, so course form absolutely crucial. 21 of the last 24 winners won last time out, so you don't want to come to the champion hurdle out of form. You've got to be at the top of your game. Oh dear, sublimity. Winner has come from the first six in the market for 16 of the last 17 years. No real surprises there, I guess. The key horse is generally the best in the championship races. Now, the AIG Europe champion hurdle has provided six of the last 12 winners, so the horses who've run in the race before and indeed won it before have got a good record and just one winner in the last 25 years have won the Christmas hurdle. So if you were at peak form at Kempton on, at the Christmas period, basically you're going to be rubbish in the champion hurdle. Now, Luke, plenty to look forward to as far as entries, loads of entries at the early stages, but the field is obviously going to come down to, I reckon, half a dozen leading contenders. They will probably include the likes, of course, on that page of Hartshire Board, who, of course, was a winner at Dundalk, warmed up on the flat. Hardy Eustace, we've got to see whether he goes for the world hurdle or the champion hurdle. The next page includes some interesting horses. Pigeon Island, the novice, still in there, unlikely to run. Silent Oscars, a doubtful runner as well. But Sizing Europe, of course, is the favourite. Straw Bear's been OK, but can't really win, can it? Sublimity was last year's winner. And uh, Amaretta Rose, who travelled so well in the Supreme 12 months ago, would, I suppose, have a chance at her peak. Lunaire, she's likely to go for the Mayor's contest. Now, on At The Races, uh, www.attheraces.com, the website, you can, of course, check out all the form on the form guide for the particularly the leading Irish contenders, but we've picked out some to have a look at, including, of course, the favourite. Let's start off with Sizing Europe. Al Ellen Lunaeus chasing in vain now as they come down towards the final flight. It is Sizing Europe and Andrew McNamara with a five length lead over Hardy Eustace Al Ellen Lunaeus at the final flight and jumps it big and bold. It is Sizing Europe who's out clear of Hardy Eustace and Al Ellen and running up towards the finish. It is Sizing Europe who's galloping his way into the champion hurdle picture as he wins the AIG. Andrew McNamara shows his delight. Well clear, fine performance, close second. Hardy Eustace and Al Ella. Well, as Matt was saying, a tremendous record winners of the AIG in the champion hurdle. Andrew, he's fast improving Sizing Europe and uh, there's no getting away from it. That was impressive. It was impressive and he's also got the advantage of winning around Cheltenham as well mm. uh, already this year. So... You've got to try and tie in the form, obviously with Hardy Eustace, uh, you know, he's going to be a 20 to 1 shot in the, uh, in, if, he, if he happens to go in the champion hurdle. So he's beaten a 20 to 1 shot in the AIG, um, he's obviously beaten him very, very well. Alela is obviously better uh, around a flat track like Aintree, which he's proved before. And um, that it's, is his time of year as well. It's hard to get a line on, isn't it? Because I think Europe's plainly improving at a rapid rate of knots, but it's a question of how much he's improved, isn't it? Absolutely. And also, you've got to bear in mind that the ground won't be as soft as it was in Leopardstown Good that point. day at Cheltenham. The chances are at Cheltenham, the ground is going to be a, a lot quicker than that. It won't be on the quick side because Cheltenham nowadays is never on the quick side. They ensure that it's going to be genuine good ground uh, at, at worst. Now, you're mentioning Cheltenham. Obviously, it's crucial having Cheltenham form, which Sizing Europe does. Ties in nicely with David Pipes or Sasana as well. That's right. And I, I, you just get the feeling that Asana, they have really mapped out this campaign really, really well. And it is totally and utterly geared towards Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. He's obviously a horse who goes well fresh, yeah. which he's proved already this year. He's had a, a light campaign. And, and like you say, we've, we, we've seen Cheltenham form before. It always helps to have Cheltenham form. He has it as well. I get the impression you like him, don't you, Asana? I, I do like him. He, he's the sort of horse, he's got a progressive profile. 
uh, going into this race, and I don't think he's probably reached his peak yet. Well, let's not forget, of course, last year's winner, Sublimity. It hasn't been a straightforward campaign for this horse, but of course, last year he came into the race having done virtually nothing again. Absolutely, and he's, he's going through the same campaign again this year. Probably um, it hasn't quite gone as smoothly as it did last year, um, but still, connections are fairly bullish. Again, another horse who goes particularly well fresh. Obviously, isn't that easy to train, hence why it's, it's the light campaign. But um, Would that worry you? That, that's an obvious worry, then. It, a slight worry, but the only thing you would say is that the trainers proved it, as last year, going into the race, that he doesn't have to have much racing to have him strip fit on the day. Of course, anyone that logged on last year will have known that David Duggan put up sublimity at massive prices anti-post. Now, what about the chances of Harchibald? Not everyone's favourite horse, but couldn't be in better form coming into this race, Andy? No, he's, he put up a good performance at Dundalk on the flat uh, the other day. Mm. Not the usual uh, route that a champion hurdler would uh, head for, but the horse looks a lot happier. To me, his head carriage is a lot lower. He seems to be enjoying himself an awful lot more and he's going the right way. Do you think this horse is a type of horse, I mean, he, Paul Carberry's absolutely tailor-made for this fella, isn't he? Let's start off saying that. I think one thing you'll find that whatever Paul Carberry does at this Cheltenham with Archibald, whether win, lose or draw, he will not get slated for trying to get there too late. You know, a, a, lot, a lot of people had a go at him for, for not kicking on at Cheltenham a couple of years ago when they maybe thought he should have won, but uh, he isn't an easy horse. At Newcastle this day. But he's ridden him differently here, Andrew. He's taken up and the horse has gone through with his effort. I think you found that Catch It took him to the last and they were, they were coming back to him, whereas in the champion hurdle, when he did get beat, Hardy Eustace, the game terrier he is, doesn't give up. If he's there with any chance at the last, he keeps galloping, whereas in that race that you saw there, the horses were coming back underneath him and probably weren't quite as good as the likes of uh, Brave Inca and Hardy Eustace in the champion hurdle. Catch It, a very reliable horse, you know, a winner at the festival last year, of course. Has he made that progression? Has he improved enough to be a real key player? I think you've seen with Catcher, you, what you see is what you get. I don't think he has improved on last year, but on the other side of the coin, I don't think he's di digressed either. I still think he's as, uh, as good as he was last year. He's ha his races haven't been run to suit. You'll see Catcher at his best at Cheltenham. I've got a feeling he's got a good chance of finishing in the frame at Cheltenham. Fast run race, he won't have to do the donkey work as at Newcastle that day. He had to take up the, the running from mm. the third last and do his own work. It isn't his style of running. He likes to be taken into the straight. One thing you know at Cheltenham is he'll be staying on to death when some of the others are coming back to him. Right, what about some of the the bigger price horses, some of the outsides? I mean, of course, Afsu, what about Afsu? Let's start with him. Ran such a great race here in, in the contest last year. He did. Um, at a big price mm. as well. Mm. Like you say, he loves a strong run race. And I think you'll see him again. At a big price, he could be value. Um, Hardy Eustace uh, this day over two mile three. Asco, I would say this is probably Hardy Eustace's best trip nowadays. Yeah. Um, I can't really see him. Um, On this, Afsoon's not going to win a champion hurdle, is he? On this run. No, you tie the form in here with Hardy Eustace and Afsoon to, uh, to obviously size in Europe, yeah, of course how well he beat him. Uh, but I don't think Afsoon was probably absolutely on song this day when he got beat. Nicky Henderson's horses weren't absolutely on song at this time of year and have obviously improved as the season's gone on. So, you know, Nicky Henderson, a great, great man at getting horses at Cheltenham at their peak. So you also got to put things like that into the equation. Okay, what about Tony McCoy's mount, Straw Bear, what about him? Straw Bear, for me, he's best on a flat track like Wing Canton and Kempton. Uh, he's proved that in the past before, and I just think that Cheltenham isn't really his cup of tea. If it came up heavy, yes, you may have to put him in the equation, but how many times do you get heavy ground at Cheltenham? Is there, is there anything else in there that we haven't mentioned that, that perhaps would have a chance? Blythe Knight, for instance? I, I don't think he's probably... I think he's probably better effect on a flat track like Aintree. But the, unfortunately for Blythe Knight, there's no, there is no two-mile race at Aintree. They have to go for the, for the champion hurdle. Right, what was your record in the race? Um, slightly better than yours, I would say, <laughs> but that isn't saying an awful lot. Uh, finished, I, didn't, I, only, I think I've only had two rides in the champion hurdle. One was on a 500 to one shot, and the other was on French Holly, and he finished third Good, uh, yeah. behind Isterbrax. But um, that was no, no main feat. What's the winner then this year? If you were to push me, put my, put my uh, hat on the table, I would go for Osana. Okay, you've heard it here then. Osana, the selection of Andrew Thornton. <sighs> At theraces.com, Cheltenham Preview, sponsored by Labrooks.com.